talks about believing in the breakthrough, believing the miracle is going to happen. Do you believe that can happen in this place this morning? I believe it too. The presence of the Lord is in this place. We thank you, Jesus, so much for that. I give you glory for all you've brought me through. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward, follow after you. And 
now I'm ready for whatever you want to do, your presence, your presence. to come the cross before me my hope all things above and in you Jesus the best is yet to come your presence your presence is an open door we want you You know, that song right there was pretty powerful. It says, I believe a breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. How many of you this morning would be honest and say, I could use a miracle in my life? Yeah? Amen. 
I'm in agreement with you. Maybe today you would say, Pastor, I'm in need of God to do something physically in my life. I need Him to heal me. I need Him to make me whole. I need Him to do something. We're going to pray specifically. I want us to pray for Bobby Bryant. His wife, Melody, is here with him. And and uh, Bobby got a very negative report about cancer. But we know the God that can heal cancer, Amen. don't we? And so we just believe that God is able to touch and able to heal. And so we're going to pray for him. And if somebody is near Bobby right here, they can go and they can just stand around him and agree with him. He's sitting right there. And maybe you need to touch in your physical body this morning. You need God to heal you. If that is you, if you'll just step in the aisle next to you, that signals, hey, I'm believing for a touch. I'm believing for God to heal me. And then if somebody sees you in the aisle, they know, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to pray for this person. So just kind of stand out in the aisle. If that's you, you need a touch. Let us agree with you today. If there's anyone else, and if you see someone standing in the aisle next to you, just go and put a hand on their shoulder, and we're going to agree with them for a special touch. Father, we thank you today. Your presence is an open door. And your presence is here. So we open this door wide for your miracles to flow, for your touch to be here. God, we lift up Bobby to you today. We lift up Melody, and we just pray today for a special touch from on high. Lord, you said what is impossible for man is possible for you. By your stripes, oh God, we are healed. From the top of our head down to the soles of our feet. So I pray right now over every cancerous cell, that is trying to rear its ugly head to destroy life, we thank you, Lord. You're going to take those cells and you're going to diminish them and you're going to bring supernatural life over him. I just pray that over him. I pray peace over he and Melody today. I pray, God, for a miracle in this body. I pray for miraculous reports for the doctors to be blown away at what you do, God, and we'll give you the glory and the honor for it. And, Lord, throughout this room, there are needs everywhere. There are those that need a touch from you. There are those that are believing for healing today. I pray right now that you would begin to move, that you begin to touch from the top of heads down to the soles of feet. Lord, I thank you for healing kidneys. I thank you for touching joints. I thank you for healing necks and shoulders and backs and legs. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing internal, internal organs. I thank you, Father, for doing a great work today. And it's by your stripes, God, we believe. We are healed and we are whole. And we give you the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come on, I think we can praise God a little better than that. Come on, He's a good God. Amen? Hallelujah. That's good stuff right there. Amen? Man, when they take off on that, you have no rival. <laughs> and you have no equal. I mean, our God, He reigns. We, we, we don't have to encourage God to reign. He already reigns. We don't have to hope He makes it. He's already made it. We don't have to pray and believe that God's going to give us the victory. He's already got the victory. So in Him, we have everything we need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's good today. I am so thankful for that this morning. Powerful stuff. And y'all were singing good on that one. I'm not going to lie to you. First service was sleepy. They didn't sing out, but y'all sang out. That's pretty good stuff. Amen? <laughs> I love that. Let's get Do that line one more time. See, they want you to do that line. Do that line one more time. And you have no rival. Come on. And you have no Come on, sing it like you mean it today. Come on. Now and forever, God reigns. And yours is the kingdom. And yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name.
That's some good stuff right there. Amen. Amen. If you're on the winning team, high five somebody around you before you're seated. Come on, encourage them today. Pastor Keith, come on up here with me. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's good stuff right there. Well, Life Church, I'm excited to announce to you that tomorrow we've got an I Love My City Serve Day planned. And we're going to be meeting at 6 o'clock at various locations around town. And those locations are outside the four doors here on the table. You may have already seen them. You may have already signed up. But here's the goal. Uh, we have got eight different projects. Six of the eight are lots, not even a house on them. They're just lots that need to be mowed and manicured and looking good. Uh, let's see, five of those are with the Habitat for Humanity. Uh, they're going to be building homes on them. Uh, and so we're going to go over and just clean up the lots. Uh, the sixth one is an elderly lady that cannot keep the lot. And so we're going to go and we're going to mow it for her. And then we've got two projects that are a little bit bigger. One is an 83-year-old lady, single lady that has a home that the floor in one of her rooms has collapsed. And so there's a group going to go in and going to raise the floor up and take care of it. But before that can happen, she was a collector of all things. And uh, so this room is full of stuff and it's got to be emptied out and thrown away. The dumpster is there. But here's what I want to request. On that project, I'd prefer there to be no children to go because the floor is collapsing. And we want to keep you guys safe. And also, you probably need to wear some gloves and maybe a mask and just uh, be prepared for some dirtiness in there. And we're going to throw that away and do some work there. And then the last project is a house that we went to last month. And uh, the sweet lady, we worked in her lawn. She couldn't grow a blade of grass if she wanted to in her backyard because it's a jungle. So I need four or five chainsaws to meet me there. We're going to trim up that yard. And if you have a truck and a trailer, bring it. And we're going to put all the brush on that, haul it over here to the church, to our front field over here, where we'll be preparing for our trunk or treat bonfire. So we're going to have a bonfire there, and we'll burn all that. So sign up after service and help us love on our city tomorrow. Amen. Also, we're going to be we're going to be cutting down three trees right back here in the back of the church that are dead, and uh, we need a couple of people to help us with that. I'm going to be a part of that one, and we've got a tractor that's going to then once we get them cut down and delimb, they're going to haul these trees out here as well. We're going to have a huge bonfire. It's going to be an outstanding evening, so bring all of your children. The parking lot's going to be lined up with cars with the trunks open and candy in it. It's just going to be a great, great evening. You'll hear a little bit more about that in just a moment, but make plans to attend that. It's going to be a wonderful time. Ushers, if you would come, we're going to wait up on you for our Sunday morning tithes and offering. Give you an opportunity to give today. You give, and I know God's going to bless you in a very special, special way. How many knows we cannot outgive God? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, my wife and I have been paying our tithes for a long, 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 long time. I'm not going to tell you how long because you'd get an idea how old my wife is and she would get me after church. But I always tell people this. When I was young, rocks were still soft. They hadn't even got hard yet. So it's been a long time. But what I'm trying to say is this. When you give to God, you can just take it to the bank that God will be faithful with you. Because if the Bible says, how many knows when the Bible says something, it's true? Amen. Amen. When the Bible says something, it's true. And he says that when we're faithful to him, that he will open the windows of heaven. I love that. Because he says he will pour out upon us blessings that we cannot contain. How many would like to be blessed just in such a great manner you couldn't contain it? Just wave your hand real big like that. Say amen. 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 Give, and I promise you God will be faithful to you. Father, we love you today. We're so thankful to be in your house. We've already been lifted up toward heaven as the praise and worship team have just led us in a time of worship. Our hearts are now ready. We are prepared for the word of God. 
We ask you, Lord, that our minds would be open, our hearts would be receptive. Lord, that we can receive the word today. And now as we come to this part where we give, I ask you also to touch our hearts because you said you love a cheerful giver. So as we give this morning, I pray, God, that we will give not just from the abundance of what we have, but that we will give according to what you have said, that we will be cheerful givers today. And as we give, I know you'll take it and bless it and break it and use it to reach so many more and more people for you. And so we love you today. We thank you for all that you've done. And we ask every bit of this in your name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 presence already and I know that it's going to continue um, but first thing I got a few announcements is if you are new to Life Church let's first of all let's just give our visitors a round of applause because I know it can be gutsy coming into a big church and we want you to be involved so if you would like to be connected we have a couple ways that you can get connected one is you can fill out the card that is in front of you in the seat in front of you and you can drop that in the offering bucket as it passes by or you can text NEW to LC at 555-888, and we can get you connected that way. Also, if you would, as a body, as a family, as a church, would like to get notifications and be a part of what's going on here at Life Church, you can text Life Church to the same number, 555-888, and you can get connected on everything that we do around here and get involved. And it's a great way to stay connected with us. Also... You can follow us on our social media. You can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and Twitter. You can see what's happening around here and um, follow us and give us a like. Also, a few exciting things that are happening is that prayer is Monday through Thursday from 1030 to 11. There's people that has been coming and joining us, and that is so exciting because I said it in first service. I'm going to say it again. Is pastor had said something to me the other day, which I thought was so incredible. Is he said that he felt the Lord told him that... McAllister is already in the process and in the move of change. Do y'all believe that? Yes, I do too. And I think that it's because of our prayer and because of us stepping out in our actions and doing things in our community and taking what we believe inside these four walls and taking it out there into our community. And I do believe that it all starts with prayer. So if you could stop, come by at that time and join us in prayer, we'd love for you to. Also, First Wednesday is this Wednesday. Y'all, it is an incredible, yeah, come on. It is an incredible time of worship, a wonderful message. And this Wednesday, we're going to be do, going to be doing baptisms. So if you or someone you know wants to be baptized, go and sign up in our lobby. We would love to baptize you Wednesday night and uh, make that declaration. Also, trunk or treat. If you guys have nothing going on on the 28th, which you should just mark your calendars now because nothing else is going to be as exciting as trunk or treat. So uh, starting at 5 p.m., bring out your whole family because it's going to be an incredible night for everyone. We're going to have inflatables, food trucks, bonfire, all kinds of fun stuff. If you would also like to participate in that, there is a sign up in our lobby. You can go and visit that. And if you have any questions, you can ask that as well. Also, where's my men at? Where's the men in the house? Give me, give me a holler, give me a raise. Where are you at? All right, we're all embarrassed, it's cool. Okay, it's all right. I know you're out there, I can see you. <laughs> we have a men of life pancake breakfast coming up. How many of y'all like pancakes? How many of y'all like pancakes? Food, pancakes, okay, all right, good, there we are. We got a pancake breakfast coming up for the men of life. It is going to be on October 6th at 8 a.m. in our gymnasium. Come out for some great fellowship and some great food. And let's get connected together as, as men. I will not be there, but y'all have at it. 
Also, last but not least, is we have the concert that's coming up. We only have a limited amount of discounted tickets, so if you want to take one of those or get one of those, you can um, at our cafe or Connect go over there and get one of those because there's only a limited amount, so get it while, you, while it lasts. Also, we're still in need of a few people to help us with the morning teardown and the evening teardown, so if you would like to help out and be a part of that, you get into the concert for free. And so if you want to do that, sign up. We would love to have your help. And if for more information, let's just turn our eyes to the screen. Hey, it's Darren from We Are Messengers, and we're coming to see you. Everything comes alive. Everything comes alive. It's the We Are Messengers, maybe it's okay tour with our friends Iron Coast. Love is always right I'm Brandon Murphy. It's going to be an incredible night of music and seeing what God can do. There's going to be laughter, tears, shouting, jumping, crying. If you can feel it, you're going to get it. November 2nd, McAllister, Oklahoma at Life Church. Tickets are available now at awakeningevents.com. We hope to see you at the We Are Messengers, Maybe It's OK Tour, with our friends Aaron Cole and Brandon Murphy. Another awakening event from the Awakening Foundation. Amen. So good to see you all here today. We're glad you're in the house. Are you all glad to be here today? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Orlando, come up here. Wednesday night, you had youth service. How many were in youth in this room? 177. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome. And so, okay. My question to you is, now that you have this auditorium, because that was our deal, if you hit 175, you can meet in here. Uh, how many are you going to have this week for First Wednesday? 78. I mean, wouldn't you think if somebody has that many youth coming to a youth group, he would have a little more faith than to add one one. All right, so we're going to try that again. So how many of you think will be here this week? <laughs> Don't you love it when I do this? Orlando loves this. Oh, 180. 180. Okay, we'll take five. Three more. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's good. Very, very. Okay, so anyway, a lot of awesome things are happening on Wednesday nights with students, 7th through 12th grade, and also our kids' ministry, K, or nursery all the way up to 6th grade. we got a wonderful things happening on Wednesday night. you got to get them here. So bring them, right? Bring them. Awesome. All right, come on, stand on your feet. Let's do our life confession. Let's get into the Word of God. Are you all ready this morning? Come on, say it out loud and with power. The life I live is not my own. It is anchored in Christ Jesus. I choose to accept Him whose love accepts me, heals me, and changes me so I can love others. Come on. I am alive, and so is God's Word. I open my eyes to see, my ears to hear, and my heart to receive. Come on. Today is a good day. This is my life confession. Come on. Give God a big hand clap. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Come on, would you give our musicians a big hand and our tech booth a big hand? They get here early, early on Sunday mornings to make sure everything is just right for you to have an experience with God. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of volunteers on this campus seen and unseen, that do not get the recognition they so deserve. Would you give all of our volunteers a big hand? We appreciate them so much. So we're kicking off a brand new series here at Life Church called Life Savers. How many of you noticed you had a little piece of candy in your seat? Yeah. Okay, I want to know, how many of you sat down and thought, great, the color I do not like? Let me see your hands. You know, that kind of, the yellow one, no one really likes the, the yellowish one or the green one. But the green one, they changed the flavor. It is better than it used to be. 
So yeah, great. Yeah, great. There you go. She's happy about green. But okay, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you would be honest and say when you saw the one you sat down and got, you switched it with one next to you? Yeah, crazy folks. So if you got the color you didn't like, it's because of the person next to you. They stole yours. But Lifesavers is all about the attributes of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that dwells within every single believer. We believe that if you are saved, if you have given your heart to Jesus, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence on the inside of your body. Now, the essence of who He is is wrapped up in this thing called the fruits of the Holy Spirit. His fruit. That's who He is. Look at this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. I'm going to give you a bunch of scripture today. So I hope you're taking notes or you got your phone out and you're taking notes on your phone or something that way you can know everything that I've said and you can keep it for later. But 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, whom you have received as a gift from God? Look at that same passage of scripture now in the message translation. Verse 19 and 20, it says, Didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place? The place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not, so, not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. Now look at this last line. So let people see God in and through your body. Amen. Let people see God in and through how you live. Amen. Amen. Amen? Let them see Him. Because the God they see will be the God you put on display. The life you live. Now, we find the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5. So if you'll turn there with me, we're going to kind of run through this chapter. And I would really like to make an assignment for you this week before you return on Sunday, since this is going to be our series for a while. I want you to read Galatians 5 through. It's 26 verses. It's a really quick chapter, but it's got a lot of powerful stuff in it. We're going to read most of it together here. I'm going to read to you from the New Living Translation. I'm going to kind of move quick because people tell me I get long-winded. And I know that's just a lie from the devil, but we're going to go there, okay? Galatians Chapter 5, beginning of verse 1, it says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. Make sure you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Now in the next few verses, there's a discussion about the law. And they're arguing about the law. And different regulations going on there. And how if this, if this was done or that was done, they would live up to the law. And all these things are going on. And so now, Paul's sitting here discussing this with the church saying, Listen, what you have in Jesus has overruled and outdone what the law of man wants. So now put Jesus in your heart. Verse 5, it says, But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait and receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there's no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. This was the law they're arguing over. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Verse 7, You were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for He is the one who called you to freedom. This false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. I am trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings. God will judge that person who he is for who he is, who, who has been confusing you. I just want to stop right there and tell you God is never the author of confusion. God is always about clarity. He's always about peace. And he always speaks very clearly to us. Skipping down to verse 13. It says, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love, like what we're going to do tomorrow out in our city. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. How many of you see that all over social media today? All over our news today? And sadly enough, in churches today. Carrying on, verse number 
16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite to the sinful nature. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so that you're not free to carry out your good intentions. Can you relate to that? You, you come to the altar, God, I give you this weakness. I'm never going to do that again. I'm not going to fall for that temptation again. And you're doing good for day one, day two, day three, day four, somewhere around day five. The enemy comes in, he tries to plant it there. Or maybe you're doing good week one, week two, week three, week four. Then somewhere around week five, he comes around and he tries to plant it there. And you find yourself falling into a trap you promised God that you would never fall into again. And it's all because the spirit and the flesh are constantly warring against each other. Amen. That's the way it works. That's the way it's going to be until we get to heaven. These things are going to happen. Amen? Amen. Carrying on. So you're free to carry out your good intentions. Verse 18, but when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under the obligation to the law of Moses. Verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's powerful stuff right there, isn't it? The good news about Paul listing all these sins and struggles is that basically he nailed everybody in the room. Amen? Amen? Because what you may be struggling with, the one next to you may not be struggling with, but all of us can find ourselves usually somewhere in here. Carrying on. Verse 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. And since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. That means don't just follow the Spirit on Sunday to the altar and then back out into the junk you got freed from at the altar on Monday. Follow the Spirit's leading every day, every place, everywhere, in your marriage, in your home, in your children, in your job, in your career, in your finances. Follow the leading of the Spirit. The Spirit has something to say. He'll lead you and He'll guide you and He'll help you along the way if you will allow Him to. Amen? Verse 26, let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Galatians 5 is a powerful chapter. But Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 through 20, he said, look at this, by their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from, from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears what? And every bad tree bears, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. But every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. Thus, Jesus said, by their fruit, you will recognize them. What does your life say about who you are? What is your life? What does your earthly life say about who you are? What is your life in your thoughts the words you speak, the things that you do, the actions you have, the reactions you have, your relationships. What do they say about your life in Jesus? For as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, there are built-in lifesavers inside of us. And no matter the life situations, they're there to help if and only if we engage them. The fruit of the Spirit will not be evident in your life if you do not engage the fruit of the Spirit. You have to open yourself up and say, if love is on the inside of me, if joy is on the inside of me, I'm going to allow these things to go on in my life. So let's talk about the fruits this morning. The first one we're going to talk about today is that of love. Everybody say love. 
But what is love? we got to define what love is. Love is a, an intense feeling of deep affection. It is fondness. It is tenderness. Deep affection. Yesterday, I had the privilege to take my son to God's country and watch the Oklahoma Suitors slaughter the Baylor Bears. And it was just a God time in the house. I know all the OSU fans are mad, but you guys slaughtered Kansas too, so that's good. But here's the thing. There was love in that house. The fans there were passionate about a football. I mean, they hooped and hollered. They threw their hands in the air. They screamed to the top of their lungs. They danced around. When the camera came on them, they made up dances and looked like absolute crazy fools. People made fools out of themselves because of the love they had in their heart for a team. We come into this house and we're talking about Jesus, the Son of God, who gave up his life for us so that we can live the best life there is to live. And we say, come on, say amen. Amen. What's well, church? We're supposed to be reverent. Says who? Come on. Be excited about Jesus and what he's done. Amen. <laughs> I'd much rather get excited about the Lord. I'm like, my word, if cannons being shot off will get y'all excited, I'll bring them in here. It works at the football game. They score. Everybody's like, ah! My son's holding his ears, but I mean, whatever, whatever it takes, amen? 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 7 says, Love is patient. This is what love is. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. Woo, altar call coming. Love keeps no records of being wronged. Oh, another altar call. Love does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. That's what love does. Now, if you're married in this house, you could put your name there towards your spouse. Taryn is patient. Sometimes. Taryn is not irritable. Ooh. I mean, come on, put yourself there. Did you notice the amen's got quieter there when you start putting yourself there? Okay, if your wife was rating you upon 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, men, what would you get? Uh huh. And ladies, what would you get if your husband was rating you? And okay, parents, what would your kids rate you? Bow your heads and close your eyes. Think about it for a minute. If that fruit's on the inside of us, they go to church with us on Sunday mornings, and then we go home on Monday, and we're screaming at them all the time and yelling at them all the time. What kind of love is that in our hearts? The love is not in us. Love is not. Let me tell you what love is not. If we're going to say what it is, let's say what it is not. Love is not what the world has made it out to be. It is not something that is conditional. It is not something that is here one day and gone tomorrow. But before we can truly answer what love is and what the question, the question of what love is, we must first know who love is. For love is a person. John chapter 1 verse 1, Jesus said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then First John chapter 4 verse 8, Jesus taught, if a person isn't loving and kind, it shows that he doesn't know God, for God is, love. who is love? God. God is love. So if God is love and we have Jesus on the inside of us, then that must mean the God of love is on the inside of us and you and I now have love in there and have the ability to love other people. Yeah. Amen? We can love them. So who does God love? Who does God love? God loves me and God loves you. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. little ones to give me They are weak, but he is Some of y'all don't even know this song. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Come on. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. 
The Bible tells me so. Yes, it does. Amen. The Bible tells me so. And if it tells me, then that must mean he loves me. Look at your neighbor and tell him God loves you. Now go ahead and look at the neighbor that you just rejected and they're wondering. Tell them too. God loves you too. Jesus loves you. John 3.16, Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever, that's anybody, believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. That's powerful. John 15 verse 13, Jesus said this. He said, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. Who is it that laid down their life? Jesus. Jesus gave up his entire life so that you and I could have life. And because he gave up his life for us to have life, we can have the most abundant real life and we can live it with power and we can live it with authority and we can live it where we show others the love that God has for them. Amen? Amen. But here's the deal. I can't give something away that I myself have not received. Have you actually opened your heart and allowed Jesus to come in and give to you the love he has for you? His love will come in and his love will come in to stay. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you will open the door and hear my voice, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. He says, if you will open the door, I can't open the door for you. Your parents can't open the door for you you the person sitting next to you can't push the door open so that you feel the love of God you've got to be willing to open up and say God I'm in need of your love and he will come in oh but pastor I'm not worthy I've done too much bad there's no way God could love me there's no way I mean if you do all the things that I had done there's no way God could now he could love you and he can love you but not me he couldn't love me I'm here to tell you God will love you despite your good despite your bad despite what you've done despite what people know despite what people don't know God loves you and he's willing to love you in your mess and bring you into a new place if you'll just open the door today he'll come in and he'll love on you amen he'll love on you and isn't that just what everybody in this world is searching for someone they can open the door to their heart to and experience unconditional everlasting love but listen to me Natural love, love on this earth, cannot complete and fulfill what supernatural love designed. Did you hear me? Natural love cannot fulfill you in a place that was designed and created for supernatural love to exist. People will try, but it won't last. People will try this and that, but it won't last. Look at this, John 15. Verse 4 through 5, Jesus said, remain in me. This is powerful. And I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. And those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do what? The supernatural love of God is the only thing, church, that can fill and complete when we walk away from God's love in search of something else. It fulfills for a season, but it will not last. There is no love on this earth that can ever fulfill that spot but Jesus. Jesus is the only thing that can fulfill the voids in your life and last. You can find love and hear about love from other people, but it will be conditional. It will be based upon feelings. It will be based upon a season. And and it will kind of come and ebb and flow. But when you get the love of God on the inside of you, it doesn't matter what's going on. It will remain there. Amen? John chapter 15, verse 16 through 17. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. He has chosen you. I have appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And this is my command, love each other. Isn't it interesting that there's a common thread throughout all of Scripture about you and I supposed to love people? Because love is powerful. When we start loving people the way Jesus loved us, they'll start experiencing something the world can't give them. And when they start experiencing something the world can't give them because they've searched the world over for it, then all of a sudden we're going to find people opening their hearts to this love from God and people giving their lives to God. And when people give their lives to God, that's where real change occurs. 
Are y'all still with me this morning? And so we got to realize God loves us. God chose us to house his supernatural love. Amen? Amen. But why does God love me? Why does God love me? God loves me so I can love others. It's in our life confession. I choose to accept him whose love accepts me so I can love. Yeah, there's something about loving others. Trying to love others apart from the love of God is like going to Six Flags and waiting in that long line for your favorite roller coaster ride. You know what ride, that line I'm talking about? The one that is a mile long, that's two hours long, that there's no airflow. It's 180 degrees in Texas with 200% humidity. Everybody is sweating and not wearing deodorant. And there they are throwing those little misters on you and just moistening up the stink and you're thinking my god this ride better be worth it like riding that ride and getting up there and trying to love without the love of god is like finally making it through that line getting on that roller coaster to find out you're just gonna sit there that's what it's like But when you experience the love of God and that he has for you and you finally learn the way that he has loved you is the way you're meant to love others, that's when the roller coaster that you waited so long to get on finally takes off. And now you're going through the ups and you're going through the downs and the turns and the bumps and the mountain climbs and the free falls. You see, because that's what love is about on this earth. Because that love from Jesus will be with you when you're climbing the mountain And that love of Jesus will be with you when you're sliding down into a valley. That love of Jesus will be with you when it's a bumpy road. And that love of Jesus will be with you when everybody has walked away and no one has stayed. He will stay with you. Amen? Amen? Because that's how it works. I watch as so many people mistaken love for lust. It's in the dating. I watch people dating and People going out with people and being like, oh, I just love this person. They are just everything I ever wanted. (laughs) It's amazing to me. I'll watch them post it all over social media. (laughs) The love of my life. The best thing that's ever happened to me, sugar, honey, (laughs) butch. Babe. You just, you just complete me. It's so great. My life didn't come in. I didn't start living until I met you. And it's just so wonderful. And I cannot wait to spend all the rest of our lives together. And the next week, status change. Signal. Single. <laughs> oh, I really? What happened to Honey Bunch? Love of my life. I came to life when you walked in. You want to know what happened? They were trying to make that person complete them. And as long as you're searching for another human being to complete the hole in your heart and make you feel loved, you're going to constantly be searching and you're going to constantly be changing the status on your Facebook posts. Why? Because no human being was ever meant to fulfill you. Your dating individual is not meant to fulfill you. Your spouse isn't meant to complete you. Oh, let's have children. I'll have children and I'll finally be happy and complete. Did you hear all those no's? That's the parents that learned it. Because the first few years of having those beautiful gifts from God, all they're doing is vomiting and diarrhea all over you. Then they finally get a little bit old enough to go out and have friends and then they're never home and don't speak to you. Where's the completion now? So I'll get a new job. I'll get a raise and then I'll be happy. I'll go buy that new car and then I'll be happy. I'll, 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 let's, let's build a new home. Let's sell this home and get that home. Let's, let's get some new friends. Let's, let's go over here. And then I'll finally be happy. And all we're doing is searching for something that is supposed to fill us. But it was never meant to fulfill you. Because the only thing that can fulfill you and last is not the girl you just dated or the girl you're going to date or the person you're married to or the person you used to be married to. It's Jesus. And when you you put Jesus in the middle of that you'll finally be able to be complete and learn how to love the person you're supposed to love (laughs) 
so many people want to get engaged and get married and have extramarital relationships because they're searching for something to fulfill and it's never going to happen. I sit and counsel young men in my office. You know, I mean, you, you, marriage. Well, let me read this next scripture. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Jesus, help me. Dear God. I can feel some of you praying my mic breaks down, but it's not going to yet. Right. Because we got to learn real quick. Love gives, lust takes. Right. Love will always give to you, but lust will always take from you. That's the way it works. That's why when you're, if you're dating someone that's pressuring you into intimacy before marriage, that's lust. If they can't wait till you say the I do, they're not meant to be in your life. Kick them to the curb. Tell them Pastor Taryn said so. Because guess what? I've married a lot of people. And I've watched a lot of people struggle with this thing. And they think, well, once we get married, it'll be easier. No, it won't. Because guess what? While you were dating, you got to send that joker home and have some time to yourself. But once you're married, it's morning breath. It's dirty laundry on the floor. It's who's going to pay this bill. It, 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 I mean, it's real world. Can all the married people say amen? Amen. And so I want to encourage you, if you are single, don't give yourself to someone intimately. And there's a reason why. Look at this scripture. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 33. It says, husbands love your wives. And all the wives said? Amen. Well, that was weak. Uh, Y'all had a chance right there. But just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in his sight. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Amen. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed it, they care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And the two will become what? One. There it is. The two will become one. When you get married, you become one. The act of intimacy brings you into a relationship of oneness. And so then when you try to separate that, that's why at the end of every single one of my wedding ceremonies, I say, what God has joined together, let no one try to separate. You want to know why separation is difficult? It is not difficult just because you're dividing up finances and children and home and clothing. It's because you two became one. And when you become one through intimacy, you are tied together you are linked together and that's why when you're not married and you're intimate with this one and with that one and with this one and with that one all you're doing is giving a piece of yourself to all these people that don't care about you and don't love about you and you feel more empty than you ever did before because now you're one with a bunch of people that were never meant to love you but when you hold out and you wait for that wedding day and you give yourself to that person you said I do too from this day forward, what happens is you become one and it becomes easier to love someone that will remain there. Amen. Oh, pastor, you're just so out of the times. Everybody's doing it. Yes, they are. And they're miserable. Yeah. Well, that's not what I hear. Yeah, they're just telling you the locker room stories. But let's get home with them at night when they got tears streaming down their face because the person that said, I love you forever, baby, is now not there. Yeah. Let's talk about the one that's having to go to the doctor now because they're getting diseases. It's getting quiet in here. There would be a lot less heartbreak if a lot more people would hold on and wait for the person God designed for them. Amen. 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 Don't hate the preacher. Just talk to Jesus about it. Amen. All right, good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, moving on. 
For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife. The two become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ in the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself. And look at this. And the wife must respect her husband. Isn't it interesting, men, that the wife only had a little part in there? Don't you wish God would have really got them? But it becomes easier for your wife to respect and love you if you will love her the way Jesus loved his church. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 2. It says, imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, in everything you do, imitate God. Because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ, he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma to God. John 13, verse 34 through 35. Told you I was going to be a lot of scripture. Hope you're writing them down. Jesus said, love each other. Everybody say, love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world you're my disciples. It's your love to other people that proves to this dark world there's something different about you and I. I'm here to tell you church has been around a long time. People are used to churches and people are used to people that go to churches. But people are not used to Christians that will truly love the world the way they're meant to love the world. Oh, but pastor, I can't love someone who's doing wrong. I can't love somebody if they're doing wrong. They're wrong, and I've got to tell them they're wrong. Isn't it interesting how sometimes we have nominated ourselves to be the judging committee? Go tell them they're wrong. Rebuke them. (laughs) And there is a fine line of that in Scripture, and a lot of times it's ministers that do that. But wouldn't it be interesting if we would start spending and focusing more time on loving people rather than fixing them? Jesus never said in his word that we were commanded by God to go and judge judge people and place them at a different level of deserved or earned grace and love. He just says, love them. Just love them. Verse John 4, verse 20 through 21 says, If anyone boasts, I love God, and goes right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it, he is a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. And I don't know about you. I am so glad God loved me when I was unlovable. I'm so glad God loved me when I was imperfect and deal with imperfections. When I have weaknesses, the word, God himself, is our source. He's our source of correction. He'll rebuke us when we're wrong he'll tell us we need to shape it up the word rebukes us and shows us our areas of need and God has made it clear to me as a pastor it is not my job to clean people up or fix them I'm just supposed to love them and then out of that love they'll see God and they'll see God who loves them and he'll deal with them amen and here's the deal When you experience the love of God, God's love will cause you to not be able to remain the same. His love will change you from the inside out. So that's where you start seeing people die off the sinful nature and start living a holy life. Amen? Amen. First John, I'm sorry, in John chapter 8, I can't help but think about the woman caught in the act of adultery, and I'm closing. I know I've nailed it hard and... Some of you are thinking about which church you're going to next week. (laughs) Good, thank you. All right, I got one. In John chapter 8, though, if you read the story, a woman's been caught in the act of adultery. The religious rulers of the time bring her out, and they throw her in the middle of the road right in front of Jesus to make a spectacle of her. And, And they were trying Jesus, actually. They wanted Jesus to condemn her to death because the law of their time said a woman caught in the act of adultery was to be stoned to death. She was to be killed. And so they say, Jesus, what do you say about this? And what's interesting is Jesus starts kneeling down. And if you read the story, he starts writing in the dirt. Now the Taron Anderson translation says that he was writing out some of their secret sins that no one knew about. (laughs) Because if you keep reading, one by one, they began walking away from this woman they brought out to be condemned. Isn't it also interesting, a little side note, they didn't bring the man? Anybody ever thought about that? But anyway, carried on. All right, so 
man, I don't know where it's coming from. And so one by one, they begin to walk away and they leave. And then all of a sudden we see Jesus back with her in verse 10 and 8. And Jesus stood up again and he said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? And I just kind of imagine her taking her dusty hands and wiping the tears off of her eyes. And the dust was on her eyes. So now she has mud and makeup smeared across her face. And she opens her eyes to find that she's sitting there alone with Jesus. And she says, Lord, no one. And look at Jesus' response to her. He said, neither do I. I don't condemn you. And he didn't stop there, and he could have. He said, go and sin no more. That's all he said. He didn't say, I can't believe you messed this up. I cannot believe you did this. I mean, he didn't browbeat her. He didn't, tell her. he didn't take a Bible out and thump it on her head. <laughs> he just said, I'm not going to condemn you. But now go live different. Church, every Sunday, we come to this altar we experience God's love. He changes us from the inside out. We walk out of here and we fall back into those traps a lot of times because we've not allowed that love to fulfill that spot but to just sit on a sideline. Let God be wrapped up in your thoughts, in your heart, and let Him love you the way He truly loves you from the inside out because then and only then are you and I able to love people with the fruit he's placed in us. If we'll fall in love with Jesus and let Jesus love us, we'll be better spouses. We'll be better parents. We'll be better Christians. We'll be better in our community and in our jobs. But it's got to begin right here. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you're here this morning, I'm going to move quick because the preacher preached long. If you would say, Taryn, I need Jesus in my heart, and I know it. I know I'm not where I need to be, but I need his love in me. I want to receive him as my Savior. If that's you, there was one in first service. There might be one in second. Is there anyone at all that would say, yes, I know I need Jesus in my heart? Just slip a hand up. Thank you, sir. God bless you. There's three. There's four. There's five. Is there anyone else? Six in the back. God bless you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? I see your hand. You can put it back down. Is there anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. That's seven right there. I praise the Lord for that. Secondly, if you're here and you'd say, Pastor Taryn, I, I know I'm saved, but I just need to feel God's love for me. I just need to know He loves me again. I'm just, I, I just have disconnected and I need to feel Him love on me again. If that's you, can I see your hands? Is there anyone at all? God bless you. Good. Last but not least, you'd say, Pastor I need Jesus to help me engage this fruit of love on the inside of me so I can love others better. So I can love my spouse better, my kids better, my community better. If that's you, can I see your hand? Yeah, lots of hands. God bless you. Would you stand with me, church? If you lifted your hand, I want you to slip out quickly and come. We're going to pray together. We're going to worship. We're going to be dismissed. Come on. If you lifted your hand, there was a lot of hands that went up. Come on, slip out so you're not going to be alone. Just come. Just come on as close as you can. We're going to say a sinner's prayer for those eight hands that went up. I thank God for it. That's incredible. Let's pray this prayer out loud together. Then we're going to pray for each other and worship. Then we're going to go, okay? Come on, let's pray together. Say, Dear Jesus, I believe in you, that you're the Son of God, that you died and rose again, and you love me. So I invite you and your love into my heart. Be my Savior and help me from this day on to live for you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like somebody behind each and every person now as we go into worship. And I want you right now, if you're down here, and there's some love issues going on. You want to feel his love or you want to be able to love others better? Just ask him for it right now as we worship together.
Are you thankful for the love of God today? Come on. So this week, read Galatians 5, 
love people out of that fruit that's on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you gave your life to the Lord, take a moment right now, pull your phone out and text LC Steps to 555-888. We want to begin this journey with you. Please don't forget to sign up out here in our lobby. We're going to be loving on our city tomorrow. Let us know where you can help us. We'll start about 6 o'clock. Bring your own equipment. Come see us. God bless you guys. We love you. Good to see you.